Greetings. Um, let me just start off by saying that if you've not watched my other videos, this video is not going to make any sense to you. So I would recommend that you go to my channel, look under playlist, and select the PTSD My Story playlist. I'm not trying to self-promote here. Uh, you don't have to watch all the videos, but at least catching some bits of the first ones. Um, and maybe the video before this one, and possibly the one before that. Um, this video is going to make a lot more sense. So with that said, let's get started. Um, I left my last video a little bit of a cliffhanger. Uh, I alluded to the fact that some things had happened and um, I wanted to, you know, wait till the next video. So here it is. Um, I waited several weeks to see how things would play out when, uh, during the time period when I, when I recorded my last video. A lot was going on and things were kind of in turmoil and I, you know, I wasn't quite sure how everything was going to end up. So now, now with the clarity of hindsight, I will explain to you a little bit about what happened. So. I had been having uh, pseudo seizures during therapy and I had to stop doing the exposure part of my therapy and then we were just kind of going to work on coping skills for several months, I think three or four months, three, two or three months, <laughs> four is a lot, um, before I could start up again because pseudo seizures are apparently a bad sign and, and anyway. Um, I think one of the reasons why I was starting to show strain, um, even though it seemed as though I was very well prepared, was that my home life was very stressful and um, in some cases unsupportive my, <laughs> uh, of what I was trying to do. And um, there was a lot of friction at home and the more I dig up these memories, the more I find that the people that I'm living with are part of those memories and responsible for some of the things that happened. And um, so there's a lot of conflict there and, and what's happening is old wounds are you know being dug up and I have trouble not, you know, living that all over again. Clearly, uh, that's not a good way to explain it. I, I think when I explained about what it was like after going through um, my sexual assault um, experience, I said that I felt like I was living with rape glasses on, and I know that sounds kind of disrespectful, but it was like I was seeing the world through these not artificial, but these emotions from the past, you know, that didn't apply to um, the present moment, but, but but it was coloring everything that I was doing. So this is now happening, you know, at home because we're digging up these memories of friction between me and my family members. So now every interaction with them is colored by this past, these past hurts and disagreements and things that were never resolved. And, um, Things started to get out of control. Uh, so I ended up quitting therapy, which I know that's what this whole video series was supposed to be about. But, you know, I, my idea of it has kind of evolved as I've gone on. I mean, I, it's really about what it's like trying to live your life with PTSD and, and try to get better. But you know, it's a, it's a process. It's not something that just you take a pill and it goes away. So because things had gotten so out of hand, um, it became necessary for me to leave my house. And I've tried, um, for, quite a while now to find an alternative because I didn't want to live there anyway. So I've been 
you know, working and trying to save up money and trying to figure out if I can get some kind of government assistance to have an apartment. I've asked around with all my friends, you know, trying to figure out if I can stay with someone and nothing has worked out. And I finally got to the point where I just said, okay, I'm going to pack all my stuff into my car and I'm going to leave. And that's why I'm in my car right now. I know <laughs> this is not my normal background setting. And um, I gave myself uh, like two weeks to get my stuff ready. And I had a doctor's appointment anyway that I wanted to, you know, um, go to before I leave or before I left. Um, but I didn't want to just live in my car and hang around the same place because... Um, First of all, it's very cold where I live. I, I haven't mentioned where I live or where I did live. Um, I was near the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul, which is in Minnesota. And, uh, of course, everyone where I live just calls it the cities. So I live about an hour from the cities in Wisconsin. And uh, I figure that's not too dangerous to tell anyone. Plus, I have to tell you because now I'm on a road trip and I want to tell you where I'm going. So, um, it's cold there in the winter. Right now it's summer, so that would be okay, but it wouldn't last long. I wouldn't be able to live in my car um, during the fall and winter months. It's not practical. So, I decided to drive south. And, you know, the first week people would say, oh, okay, you're going on a road trip. That's weird. You know, where are you going? And I'd be like, I have no idea. <laughs> and I didn't want to tell everyone the reason um, why I was leaving and get into all the explanations because most people are not aware that I've had a friction at home at all. And I've tried to kind of keep it that way and keep things private. So now I suppose it's not private, but I haven't mentioned any details. So anyway, this is getting long again. Um, road trip. Uh, after a while, things kind of started to develop. I have a plan on, you know, kind of where I'm going to head first. I have no money. Well, uh, enough money for some gas. Um, I, I've been looking into ways to make money online or some other way to make money while you're on the road. Um, I've read a lot of articles on it, and not a lot of the suggestions really fit my skill set so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do there. I'm hoping something will hit me in the head. I know it seems like a really stupid thing to do. And I wouldn't have chosen to do it if this was not my, kind of my only choice right now. I mean, I'm sure that there's other things, other choices, but they are not choices that I'm willing to um, choose. <laughs> So, I am going to start a new series about my road trip. Um, it'll be in my playlists as well. I'm just going to start a whole new playlist on my channel. And um, it's going to be about Elizabeth's Amazing Crazy Adventures. And it's still going to talk about PTSD and my other health issues. And I'm going to make that clear in the beginning of the video for people who haven't watched, you know, the this one. <laughs> this playlist and and you know really gotten into the meat of PTSD um, I still want to be really raw and honest and I still want to talk about more than just oh look here I am at some touristy attraction you know I want to talk about my journey and hopefully you know my my greatest hope in doing this project is still that something that I say will resonate with someone else and um, hopefully that someone will you know leave a comment and and maybe they'll say something that resonates with me you know I, I want to interact and I want to um, I, I just I want to reach out to others out there who are hurting and that is the point, and that will be the point of my road trip, too. You know, this is not just ha-ha fun road trip. This is road trip of a messed up PTSD girl. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'll try to show some scenery in the background. 
<laughs> instead of my car. And it, you know, it's going to be, be about my my inner journey, not just about um, all the fun places I go and see and do. I have no idea how I'm going to make this work. But I, I have faith. <laughs> I'm going to try it because I am uh, singularly averse to giving up. So, uh, this will be my last video in this series, and, uh, you know, if you want to keep up with me, absolutely go to my, uh, channel and look under playlists and check out my, uh, my new playlist on my road trip. So, I, I hope to see you there, and, um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs>